Hello, it's the ghost. Welcome to They Call Me the Ghost. If you're a fan of the strange but true happening in our world and the dark and mysterious goings on, then you are in the right place. So have you guys heard of the crazy, spooky, and mysterious, alleged of course, Nazi immortality experiment? It's not a secret. The Nazis were heavily into experimentation on unwilling human beings, and these were of all ages, including women and children. These experiments ran the range, including biological, chemical, weapon tests, tests of poisons, studies on the extremes the body can handle, things like freezing temperatures and boiling water. They tested the effects of weapons on the body, twin experiments, the effects of different diseases on the bodies, did I say poisons? And countless medical experiments of all kinds. Most of these projects had mixed results and were questionable. They had questionable goals, yet all of them were truly ruthless in nature and demonstrative of a profound and disturbing lack of respect for human life. Which, of course, we know from the fact that they really don't regard their prisoners as human at all. Now, these experiments usually left the subject injured or deformed in some way, disabled, sometimes even dead. But one secret experiment that allegedly was carried out had the opposite aim, and that was to find a way for a person to achieve immortality. Even before the purported immortality experiments, it is important to remember that the Nazis had done a lot of experimentation into making the human body better. Remember, they wanted their super soldiers. One program developed with the intent of creating super soldiers with enhanced physical capabilities and without fear or limits for use in the battlefield involved the use of an experimental drug called D9 which consisted of a wild cocktail, including cocaine, a potent stimulant known as pervitine, and a powerful painkiller called Eucadol. Basically, it was super speed rolled up with painkillers. It was believed that D9 would significantly increase focus, concentration, fearlessness, heroism, and self-confidence. It would also boost stamina and strength so they said, negate pain and reduce hunger, thirst, and the need for sleep. It was first tested on prisoners in a concentration camp and showed such promising results that it was soon administered to military volunteers. Soldiers were given these capsules and then forced to take long treks over harsh terrain with fully loaded packs And indeed, D9 did show a dramatic increase in stamina and attention span in these test subjects. With these pills, they were able to march nonstop for up to 80 miles before collapsing, although it did lead them to become hopelessly addicted to the drug. Sounds a little familiar with the stuff going on nowadays, doesn't it? Well, nevertheless, D9 was considered a resounding success back then and officially used in the field to a limited degree starting in March of 1944, with only the Allied victory preventing it from being a truly mass-produced product and squashing the ultimate plan to supply this super drug to the entire Nazi military force. Yet, for some within the regime, a higher goal was to make sure their soldiers just didn't die at all. And this is where things get even more strange. In 1999, some crates of old Nazi documents were allegedly uncovered in Hamburg that contained some rather strange experiments that are sort of a hybrid between science and the occult. The whole concept rests upon the idea that our bodies only die because our brains tell them to, that the brain has ultimate control over all biological processes, including death, and that puts us in a sort of timer that counts down to our ultimate demise. The idea here would be that if we could somehow remove that timer, the body would continue to function indefinitely and that even aging could be stopped. 
For this alleged project, the mine was kind of like a disease with what was called a universal kill switch that tells the body to start breaking down at a certain age and to then eventually die. So the goal was to turn this kill switch off. If that was done, then the theory was that aging and degradation of biological processes would also stop and effectively render one immortal. The story here goes that in 1942, German scientists went about seriously researching this. And it's not really all that bad of an idea, something to start with anyway. They chose a location outside of Germany for their research, which ended up being their ally, Japan. There, the research team apparently commandeered an orphanage outside of Hiroshima for their experiments, which was not particularly new for the Nazis because children were just as good as subjects as anyone else. In this case, children were considered perfect subjects because it was thought that their kill switch hadn't even been activated yet and the mechanism for this could better be studied. The study apparently started by dissecting the brains of both adults and children in order to compare them and try to find this elusive universal kill switch that they were looking for, eventually claiming that they found it in the cerebellum, the part of the brain that controls all subconscious activity in the brain. Okay, so far so good. Well, it gets even more strange. After this, German scientists began a series of surgeries on children trying to remove the portion they believed contained this kill switch. But at first, this resulted in the death of several subjects. How surprising, right? The bodies, which were unceremoniously dumped out in a shallow grave in the woods, these were orphans right? So no one would miss them. So they thought this is how they did their work. They would just remain nameless. They would be nobodies and disappear unnoticed. The scientists would continue to tinker with their methods. And on one occasion, they allegedly successfully removed a kill switch from a young girl. She, of course, would then go into a coma not long after that. But then she miraculously came back to life with the only side effect they could find being that she could no longer sweat. She would also go into a death-like coma every single evening. Her bodily functions stopped and the heart stopped, only to snap her back to life the next morning. It was unsettling, to say the least, but manageable, so they said. The procedure was then deemed a success. Does that sound like success to you guys? The research team continued their surgeries, of course they did, finding more success with subsequent subjects, but they also had a lot of failures, just as many, in fact. With children being inadvertently lobotomized, permanently injured, or even killed during these procedures. Well, in the meantime, the Nazis played around with the idea that a chemical compound could be used to deactivate this kill switch in adults as it was successfully carried out on some of the caretakers at that orphanage. As all of this is going on, the story goes that the children who had successfully undergone this procedure, they started to display other very bizarre behavior. And one journal entry of one of the scientists says this, They appear normal at first. Just like any of the other children, they're playing, they're cheering, they're learning normally. But when they are separated from others, that's when they seem off. They will stroll carelessly around with a blank smile on their face, their eyes looking straight at you. If approached from behind, their heads will snap around with an ungodly speed. And for a moment, you can almost see an expression so vile on their face that it makes you want to cower. But then you realize, he continues, they are just forming their dreamy smile again. Another thing is that they follow us around, but only when we're on our own. After finishing on my typewriter and heading to my room, I'm often given a fright by one of the children standing several meters down the dark hallway, staring at me. When I go off to my room, she follows me, and I shut my door, jam the chair behind it, 
and then I can sleep safely. It feels, though, as if they are ghosts at night time. Upon talking to them, I've noticed they seem more dreamy and forgetful, even somewhat blank, as if the experiments wiped out their memories as well. But it's not an innocent dreamy. Rather, it's something more sinister. They stare at you with eyes wide open. They ask you questions that you never thought they would even know to ask. One said, When your grandmother died, did she really leave you a gold-plated watch? It might seem crazy, but my honest answer was yes. Apparently, when German lost the war, these experiments were halted, and the orphanage was eventually abandoned. The lore on all of this says that the children were left to fend for themselves, and since they had been made immortal, they never grew old, and therefore they never died, haunting the abandoned weed choke orphanage to this day. Now this story has turned into a bit of an urban legend in the area, saying that if anyone is to go there and see the children, they will be asked to play a Japanese children's game in which one blindfolded player, the devil, is surrounded by the other players in a circle with their hands joined. The circle of players then moves around the devil, creepily chanting. And when they stop, this devil has to name who is standing behind them. In the case of these spooky immortal children, if you lose this game, then they kill you and they bury your body in the woods. And there have supposedly been people who have gone out to look at the orphanage and then they never return. It's a creepy one for sure and one wonders just what is the truth, if there is any here. It all has an air of urban legend, some of it might even sound like creepy pasta, but here the lines get blurry in this tale. It seems that the Germans were certainly pursuing all manner of secret projects at that time, and this abandoned orphanage really does exist. Perhaps what we are looking for here is a persistent urban legend that has sprouted out the mysteries of war, some elements rooted in certain facts, but it is hard to say. Is this all just a creepy urban legend, or is there something more to all of this? Whatever the case may be, it serves to show that the Nazis have definitely built up quite a reputation and around them quite the lore. It is quite spooky no matter what the ultimate answer is. And my question to you, of course, is, what do you think? Want more tales like this? Let me know. And thank you for listening today. And I will talk to you all soon.